I will bless your holy name, O God. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace to see another wonderful day like this, Lord. We reverence you, Jesus. There is none like you. Good morning, everyone. Holy blessed Savior, you are worthy of the praise. Hey, there is no like you. How the far could it all be? You are the sunshine, holy, holy, beautiful you are. I bless and lift your name. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, beautiful people. You are worthy of my praise, Lord. Hey, there is no like you. Out of all corners of the earth, you are the sunshine. Holy, worthy, beautiful you are. Jesus, you are, you are Savior, you are, you are healer, you are God, hey, excellent in your ways, mighty God, you are, mm. oh, hallelujah, oh, holy, worthy, beautiful, you are, hallelujah. You are, Lord, you are, mm. oh, mighty God, you are, just let me to worship God with a song, oh, holy, worthy, beautiful, you are, mm. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We reverence you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful you are. You are. Lord, you are. Mm. Lord, you are, Lord. Excellent in your ways, Jesus. You are the mighty God. You are. You are the faithful God, you are, hey, you are holy, Lord, you are worthy, Jesus, beautiful, you are, mm. you are, mm. Lord, you are, Jesus, you are healer, you are my king, you are excellent in your way, you are the mighty God, you are, you are faithful, you are the, you are holy, Lord, worthy, worthy, beautiful, you are, hallelujah, Lord, we worship you, oh yes, Lord, holy, blessed Savior, you are worthy of my praises, Father, there is no like you, Jesus, I worship you, Oh, the Jesus, you are the sunshine, ah, but a holy, worthy, worthy Jesus, beautiful you are. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. Oh, holy, holy, Lord, worthy, worthy, beautiful. You are, Father, we bless and lift your name, O Lord, this morning. Indeed, Lord, at the four corners of the earth, you are the sunshine. There is none like you, Jesus. 
Who else is to be compared unto your majesty? Who else is to be compared unto you? No one. Lord, I lift your name on I this morning. Thank you for the grace to be able to come together in this platform again this morning. Father, to study your word. Holy Spirit, by yourself, give us a better understanding of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decrease. Lord, are you mighty crazy me? By yourself, oh God, give us a better understanding of the remark of your word. May the eyes of our understanding be open this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father. Abba, Father, you are worthy. There is no like you, Jesus, you are. Faithful God, you are. Miracle worker, you are. Healer, you are. Deliverer, you are. Oh, we bless and lift your name, Jesus. Thank you, Abba, Father. This morning, Lord, I cover this place with the blood of Jesus. I cover this platform with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. As many that will watch this video anytime, any day. Father, oh Lord, I ask that your light will continue to shine in our lives, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious God. Have your way. May this message this morning, oh Lord, may you, through this message this morning, I pray for as many that will watch this video anytime, any day. Holy Spirit, by yourself, arrest that heart, arrest that man, arrest that woman. As many that are still in the bondage of darkness by yourself oh god bring them to your light in the mighty name of jesus yes the word is the word of the lord is a seed well planted and watered it grows to be great i pray that this word that you are about to hear this morning may the spirit of god water it in our hearts may it germinate may it yield increase in the mighty name of jesus thank you glorious god for in jesus mighty name i declare this meeting open in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit in jesus name amen oh Oh, hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Thank you, glorious God. Blessed be your holy name this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so excited this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Like I said earlier on, uh, better is the end of a thing, actually, than the beginning. By the special grace of God, today we'll be bringing it to a close. Uh, the series, Let There Be Light. Today we want to be seeing Let There Be Light, part 10. Oh, God indeed has been so faithful. We have seen part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4, part 5, part 6, part 7, part 8, part 9, part 10. And today we are going to be seeing the part 10, Let There Be Light. Oh, hallelujah. And actually... If uh, you, you, you have been following the series part 1 to part 9, you will see that actually when we put all these things to practice, like I will always say, one thing about the word of God is this. It's, it's one thing for us to, to read the Bible, it's another thing for us to understand, and it's another thing for us to apply it. So when we read, we understand, we will be able to apply it according to how God wants us to apply it in our life. So that the light of God will continue to shine through you and I. In order for as many that have not received Jesus as a Lord, a personal Savior, Savior, I mean, to be able to see this light through us. So we must always read the Bible to understand and as well to do what? Be able to apply it. And when we apply it, it gives a, a, a better meaning to the fulfillment of the scriptures in the light, in your life, in my life, and in the life of even as many that have not received Jesus as a Lord, a personal Savior. So that is why we will always pray for the eyes of our understanding to always be open whenever we read the scriptures and that is why i say better is the end of a thing than the beginning so all these let there be lights that we have been studying we don't just have to just study it and just leave it like that we have to study and apply it and put it to practice so that we begin to see the manifestation of this light upon our lives in the mighty name of jesus so our memory verse is taken from mark chapter 10 verse 51 and the bible says and jesus answered and said unto him what we doubt that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. I want to see. I want to see. This was uh, when Jesus healed blind uh, Bartimaeus. We all know the blind Bartimaeus in the scripture, the son of Timaeus. The Bible makes us to understand that he was blind. But the day that he had an encounter with Jesus, he was able to see that darkness that was covering his face. Physically, he was, I would rather say physically, he was blind and spiritually, he was blind. So he knew it that ah, to be in darkness, I, 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 I cannot contain this darkness any longer. Why? I want to see the light. I want to see the light. And the Bible makes you and I to understand that even when he was screaming, Oh, Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. A lot of people that we are evil seeing, they try to shut him down. They try to say, shut up your mouth. Don't call him again. But still, he pressed his way through. 
He was able to press his way through until he had a counter with Jesus. And Jesus asked him, what do you now want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Lord, I want my sight. I want to see. So you see, it's very good for us, for our eyes to be open. The eyes of our understanding to be open. One. And number two, you see when somebody is, is blind, let me say that is a blindness is another, is another word for out, uh, outer darkness. It's just as somebody is in the darkness. You're not seeing anything. And when somebody like me is in the dark, out of all the series of Let There Be Light that we have been studying, you will see that there will not be, there, 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 there will not be a, a kind of speed. There will not be a kind of speed. You will see it's, it's like somebody is being slowed down somehow, somehow. Why? Because you are not seeing. But when you are seeing, it's just like, uh, no wonder the Bible says a blind man can only be a blind man. Do you know why? Because both of them, the Bible says, we fall into what? A ditch. But at least when one person is seen and you, able, you are able to carry the other uh, person along, you will see that at least if though that person was blind, but because it moves with you that is seeing you, not, the, 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 both of you can even get to, to the same destination, but it will take maybe that, that kind of a slow speed, that kind of a slow speed. That is why the Bible, uh, the, the word of the Lord wants our spiritual eyes to be always opened. God wants our eyes to be open to the scriptures. He wants your eyes, not our, only our, our eyes, but even our heart to be opened as well to the scriptures. So this was exactly what happened to, to the blind man. He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And actually, he received his sight and he began to see. So the moment any man had an encounter with Jesus, the moment we have an encounter with our, our, our Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, automatically the light of God has already come. And if the light of God is already dwelling within us, that is the presence of God now in the life of a man. So the moment we receive um, Jesus as a Lord, our personal Savior. And from this part, I will always tell us there are some situations that you are actually going through as a child of God. You don't need to be comfortable with it. You need to ask the King of Glory, invite the presence of God to that situation. And like I will always say, every true child of God, even before you ask God for anything, you should know what you are asking your father. You should know what you want to ask as a Christian. You should know what you want to tender before God. Then when God sees your request, he said, be, act be, be, be actions for nothing. But through prayer and supplication, let your request now be made known unto God. He has asked us to tender the request. But we as his people, we should know what we need to ask our father. And when you tender your request, it's not left for your father to now do what? Look at the budget and everything. Everything and, and, and mark it for you. So one thing he said, ask. But like I said earlier on, as Christians, we should know what we are asking. And as a child of God, you should know what you want to ask your father to do for you. Just like my son, for instance, at his age now, he will not tell he will not tell the, the, the father to go and buy him a car at his age because we will not even buy because even now, car is not his problem. So also it's between us and God. So there are some certain things, like I will always say, as a Christian, you should know what you are asking God. And when you ask him and God sees the sincerity of your heart, that, that is his, he, 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 that purpose align. That the, the, whatever you are asking with him align with his purpose for your life. There is nothing that will stop God not to give you. Why? Because that thing that you are asking actually align with his purpose for your life. Because he said he thought that he had for us is of good and not of evil. This was exactly what happened to Black Knight Myers. He was not quiet despite the fact that he was blind. He wanted to see. He wanted, he wanted to see. And the moment, like I said, he had an encounter with Jesus, the eyes was opened. That is Mark chapter 10, verse 51. And I pray this morning that the eyes of our understanding will continually to be opened in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not be in the dark because whenever we are in the dark, like we, are, we have seen the series of part one to part nine, any man or any woman that is in the dark, you like I, will, I, like I will always say, a lot of things happen in the dark that you might not be able to see. But even if you see that kind of glimpse of light, you will just see that everything that has been hidden will, be tra will, will, will now become more transparent. It will be visible. It will be visible. So that is why we, it's always good we ask God to open our spiritual eyes. We will see better even as we go later. God bless you, Mama. Thank you for joining. Thank you. God bless you, Ma. Now, our Bible test is taken from... Uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 31. And the Bible says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Hemahos, which was from Jerusalem, about three score, four longs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. God bless you for joining. Thank you very much. And it came to pass that while they commuted together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. 
Good morning. God bless every one of you for joining. Thank you, thank you. I don't really want to take much of our time this morning. God bless you, Mama. Thank you. And it says, and it talk of all these things which had happened, and it came to pass that while they commute together and reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know in meaning that their, their eyes were they, they, they could not see spiritually. Their eyes they were blind. They were blind. They could not actually recognize that it was Jesus. God bless every one of you for joining. Mama, thank you. God bless you all. Their eyes were blind. They could not see that it was Jesus. So we are talking about let there be light in the areas of our spiritual eyes must be opened. And if our spiritual eyes will be opened, we don't need to go and do wash wash. We don't wash wash eyes. But what do you need to do? You need to study the word of God. By the time you study God's word, the eyes of your understanding will be opened. Your eye will be open to begin to see those things that you could not see for yourself when you were not close to the word of God. So the only means that our eyes will be opened. Like I said, as a true child of God, you don't need to do wash wash because you want to see. Eh? But what do you need to do? Study the word of God, like I will always say, every prophecy that you and I will need is in the scriptures. So the word of God opens at your spiritual eyes, and when the word of God walks through you and your eyes are opened, all those things that are like invisible, they will become visible for you. Like I will always say, they will not become visible. You will no longer be in the darkness. Like we are seeing it, we have been seeing it. Today is the end of let there be light part 10. Let there be light part 10. Yes, Mama, God bless you. The true revelational knowledge of God. So that is our spiritual eyes have to be opened. If your eyes are not open, there is no way, like I said, it's three things that happen when we read the Bible. One, it's good for us to read the scriptures. But even after we read the Bible, we need a, 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 a understanding. We need understanding to get the real revelation and knowledge about the world. And if our eyes are not open spiritually, there is no way. There is no way we can understand. Now, when you get the, 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 you, the understanding of the revelational knowledge of the world, you don't just get the understanding and you leave it there, but you need to apply it now. So this is the area. By the time you read, you get the revelational knowledge, then you apply it. You will see that, that the Bible says all things will now begin to work perfectly together for your good. We read it with the eyes of Christ. God bless you, Mama. That is the spiritual eyes we are talking about now. We don't read it with the physical eyes. We read it with the eyes of Christ. The eye, that is why the eyes of our understanding must be opened. So the, what we are seeing this morning, let there be light parts there, in the area of our spiritual eyes. We need to, our eyes need to be opened. And if your eyes want to be opened, you just have to ask the Spirit of God to open the eyes of your understanding. So by the time you read the scriptures, the scripture will now begin to open, open your eyes to it a whole lot of things that you don't even that, that maybe before you read you will not understand, now you read the Holy Spirit will give you a better understanding of that word, even if it's one verse then you will not understand better this was exactly what happened to the disciples though they were with, they were with Christ they were disciples of Christ, but they could not see far, they could not see far, the Bible says, I'm reading from uh, Luke chapter 24 verse 13 to 31 and they talked together of all these things which had happened and it came to pass that while they commute together and reasoned jesus drew near and went with them but their eyes were holding that they should not know me and he said unto them what manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and as sad and the one of them whose name was cleopas answering said unto him as thou only a stranger in jerusalem as thou not know the things which are come to pass in these days they were talking to jesus they were telling Jesus about Jesus. They were telling Jesus about Jesus, not knowing that it is the same Jesus that they are talking about, that is the Jesus that they are telling him about himself again. Now, why? Like I said, they only saw the physical, they could not see the spiritual. Hallelujah, somebody. And it says, uh, and one of them whose name was Cleopas asked you unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And I do not know the things which are come to pass in these days. And he said unto them, What things are they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and what before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him? But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had seen, also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And thirty of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, 
and slow of heart to believe all that the prophet has spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? He was asking them, and still they never knew that he was Christ. And beginning at, the, at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew near unto the village where they went and made as though would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is to uh, towards evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went to and he went to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took the bread, he blessed it. He broke it and he gave it to them, and their eyes were opened. And he knew him, and they knew him. And the moment they recognized him, that it was Jesus, the Bible says he vanished out of their sight. He disappeared. He disappeared. So you see, the Bible says he, he took the bread, he broke it, and he, and he gave it to them. Now you and I, we knew that through the death of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, we have been made old. Through the blood of Jesus. The cutting veil was torn through the blood of Jesus. He gave us redemption through the blood of Jesus. A grace is not available for us. It's not available for each and every one of us. Why? We have been redeemed and we have been made whole. So through the blood of Jesus, we were in the dark. But through the blood of Jesus, we have seen the light. Through the blood of Jesus, we were in uh, the dark. Uh, uh, through the blood of Jesus today, from darkness, we have, we, we have seen the light. That is what I was trying to say. So each and every one of us, we were in the dark without the blood. We sinned. Adamic, the, the, the sinful nature of a man. The Adamic ne and the nature of a man. But thank God for grace. We saw all what even in the Old Testament they were doing to rams, to goats, to sheep. Eh? Just to appease. Just to, just to clean. Just to cleanse, just to sanctify. Sometimes I still used to ask, if we are still living in that world today, how, uh, 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 with the economic system of things now, I wonder how many goats, how many people would have been able to be, uh, uh, how many people would have been able to afford a goat or a ram? Any little thing you go and kill goats, any little thing you go and kill fowl, any little thing you want. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood of Jesus that has given us liberty, that have opened our eyes. It brought us from darkness to light. So this is why I will always tell us the light of God must shine through you and I to be able to reach as many people that are still in the dark. Because the will of God for as many people that are still in the dark is for them not to perish. Why we saw it even in the life of the disciples that though they were disciples of Christ, but they were still blind spiritually. Their eyes were not opened. Their eyes were not opened. That was why even when they were discussing with Jesus, they did not recognize that he was the one. That he was the one until he break the bread and he gave it to them. Before they remembered, ah, this is Jesus and he disappeared. So we have a lot of believers like that, though they receive Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. But in certain areas, they are not still seen far. They are still blind. So the only thing that can actually, the only way their eyes can be opened is through scriptures. That is why you see a lot of people today, they are being manipulated by scriptures. Yes, wind of doctrines is carrying them here and there. Yes. Why? Because they are blind. Their eyes are still blind to the scripture. Though they've received Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, but their eyes are still blind to the scriptures. That is why you see a lot of people today running from one pillar to post, looking for miracle, looking for signs and wonders everywhere. Why? Because their eyes are still blind to the scriptures. Forgetting that they themselves, they are signs, they are wonders, they are miracles. Because the Bible says, we are the children that the Lord has given unto us. We are made for what? Signs and wonders. Like we will always say, all the miracle you need is in the, is in the word of God. That is why you see a lot of people today, they fall victims of false prophets, false and false and false prophets, false prophetess, false and false. Why? Running from one pillar to post, looking for visions here and there. Whereas everything we need, like we always say, prophecies, the word of God itself is prophecy. It's prophecy. Not that we don't still have real prophets that prophesy, not that we don't have them, we still have them. But one thing I'm trying to let us know is that everything you need eh, is in the scripture. So once you read the Bible, you will see which other prophecies do you need other than the prophecy that God has for you in the scripture. Which, we have a lot of promises, prophecies that God has given to us in the scripture. Are you sick? The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am ill. Are you sick? The Bible says my body is a temple of God. No sickness can come in and dwell in my body. Are you sick? There are lots of scriptures that goes with healing. By his stripes we are ill. By his stripes we are ill. I think that is even enough. That is it. The Bible says let the weak say they are well. They are strong. Whatever you think you are going through as a child of God, the scriptures is there for you. 
to come out, to come out of it. Mama Pekila, good morning, Mama. Thank you for joining. Scriptures is there. Scriptures is always there. Even in the time of your, 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 your weeping. Ah, the Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but I know joy will come in the morning. Is that one not a prophecy? Word of divine assurance. That is a word of divine assurance. A lot and a lot and a lot. No matter what you are going through, oh, there is a prophecy that says, even if, if even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. There is a prophecy that said the Bible, a God, Father, you promised me that even when I even when I pass through the wilderness, eh, even when I pass through fire, it will not burn me. Even when I pass through the wilderness, you will see me through. Can a woman forget her suckly child? No. I will never forget you. I will never leave you, neither forsake you. Are you down? The Bible says, hey, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. Eh? God will renew their strength. The Bible says with the righteous hand of God, he will uphold us and he will strengthen us. These are prophecies. These are prophecies. These are prophecies. So until our eyes is open to the scriptures, eh? a lot and a lot of us. So that is why we must embrace the scriptures. We must. Eh? Good morning, everyone. God bless you all for joining. Thank you. We must embrace the scripture. There are a lot of prophecies. There are a lot of prophecies that you and I, we need in fact by yourself. You can become a prophet of yourself or a prophetess of yourself through the scripture. By yourself, you can deliver yourself through the scripture. Through the scripture. But I am not saying, like I will always say, we don't have other fathers and mothers of faith. That is not where I'm going. But sometimes it's good you yourself as a child of God. You should be able to stand well. You should be, like I will always say, you should be able to know your identity in Christ Jesus. Who you are as a child of God. Who are you? As a child of God, you should be able to know your true identity. You should be able to know. So we see that the disciples of Christ, they, they never knew they were talking to Jesus because they were blind. And that is why our eyes must be open to the scriptures spiritually. We need to see. You need to say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding. If you want to see, you want to begin to see. You don't need to go and wash, wash your eye. With the word of God alone, you will begin to see those things, those invisible things. It will become visible. It will become visible. Hey! <laughs> Look at who I have here this morning. I celebrate grace. Hey! In fact, this midweek is blessed. Look at who I have here. That is Pastor, my mama herself. Hey, mama, hey! Like I said, there are some people that will enter this platform. I will owe the mic. I will owe the mic. I will owe the mic. I acknowledge your presence in the house this morning. She's not any other person than my mama herself, Pastor Mrs. Eziba Irabo. Hey, I celebrate grace. I celebrate grace. Mama, I honor God in your life. I honor God in your life. God bless you for coming in. God take, in fact, I really appreciate every one of you. Mama Peculiar, Mama, I cite you. Mama Peculiar, God bless you. Mama Maria, Mama Susanna, I see these are the people I see watching now. Maybe other people are watching behind the scene. If if you don't write anything, I might not see you. My mama in the ass, woman of God, anointed uh, Queen Gospel Ministry. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think, is, in fact, in, in the morning like this, this is the first time I'm seeing mama. That is why I scream. That is why I shout. See grace. See grace. Mama, I celebrate grace. I honor a, a God in your life. I'm so happy to see her this morning. I've, been, I've not seen her and I know she's busy. She's that kind of a busy type. Like I will say, when I see people like this on this platform, I just want to thank God for what he's doing because uh, sometimes I wonder, uh, what will I teach when I see, when I see mothers like this? Eh? Sitting and watching, it's just like let me sit down and watch my my daughter. Let me watch what she will, what what she want to tell me. Eh, Mama, I don't take this privilege for granted. And it's huge, it's huge for me to see you this morning. It's huge. I honor God in your life. I celebrate grace. Eh? These are women in ministry. Women in ministry. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for joining. God bless you, Mama. So I really appreciate every one of you. Thank you, Mama Peculiar. I greet you. I travel salute. God bless you all. So like I said, I don't really want to. Take uh, much of our time. We are seeing better is the end of a thing than the beginning. So let there be light. So once we have seen the light, meaning our eyes need to be opened. So if your eyes is still opened and you are still being manipulated by scriptures and you still allow wind of doctrines to begin to blow you from left to right, I want to tell you, you just have to ask God to let the eyes of your understanding be opened because all what we need, amen, amen, mama, God bless you, ma, amen. So all what we need, like I will always say, is in the scriptures. 
is in the Bible. So with the scripture, with the word of God, our eyes continually will be opened to those prophecies that God have for you and I. So it's always good for you to first of all, like I said, know your true identity, who you are. Because sometimes, even if you don't even know who you are, you might even receive a prophecy from maybe a man of God or a woman of God. Even if you don't know your true identity, you don't know who you are, you might even receive prophecies. And at the end of it all, you will not even see understand those prophecies that they are giving to, to you. But by the time you know what God can do, when you know who your father is, you know who your father is, you know what your father is capable of doing. Then even when prophecy is coming, coming to you, you will know how to handle that prophecy. It's just like, uh, like I said, uh, my, my, my little boy now. Mm? We just buy car and go and give to him. He will never know how to, how, how to go about it because first of all, he hasn't gone for this uh, 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 driving uh, uh, exam. He, he has not even started reading. Talk less of not going for the practical. will not just give him a car key. God forbid. And he will just enter the car and start to drive it. No. So when you don't even know what your father is capable of doing, there are some prophecies you will even see and you will be doubting. Ah, can God do this for me? Can God do this for me? Why? Because it's like you don't even know the true identity of the God. That you are calling on. But when you know your father. Who is who art in heaven. And you know what he's capable of doing. Then even when you don't receive that prophecy. And the prophecy is coming for instance. People they are still prophets. And not standing against it. Because it is among the fivefold ministry. But like I see, Every prophecy that must come to you. Must align. Must link you up to the word of God. That is how you know a true prophecy. Every prophecy that must come to you. Let it link you up. With the word of God. It must not go out of the scripture. That is how we know true prophecies. And because why? You have studied. It says study to show yourself approved. A, watch, a watchman that needed not to be ashamed. But rightly do what divided the word of truth. Like we always say. We, not that we know this Bible. We can never know it finished. From Genesis to Revelation. Every day by day. We see the word of God is new. The more we read. The more we get more insight. The more we read. The more we get more revelational knowledge about the word. So that is why our spiritual eyes must be opened. It must be opened. And pray that the eyes of your understanding will be opened in Jesus. Then let's quickly see to this message. And it says. The word. Let there be light. Could mean Lord. Open my spiritual and physical eyes. We see two instances. The story of the blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus was totally blind physically. So to be blind physically, automatically he was still blind spiritually. That is physical blindness. So we have a lot of people like that. Naturally they are blind. So they just have to see. Well, we have a lot of people, they are seeing, no, they are looking. You see that their eyes are open. But spiritually, they are not seeing anything. Before anything will even happen, bring. It will, it will happen before we even ah. Oh, maybe I even see this thing before. I never knew it would come like this. Why? Because their understanding was not opened to that prophecy that they saw. A lot of us as well, God is showing us some kind of revelation, visions. But because our spiritual eyes are not opened, we might not be able to understand what God is trying to tell you, even in your dream. What God is trying to pass across to you, even in your dream. And thereafter, you will still be looking, jumping from one place to the other, looking for one to come and prophesy the same thing to you. And God has already revealed it to you. But because the eyes of your understanding was not open, you could not understand. You could not understand. But whether or whether or not, the light of God must shine and every veil in our eyes must, must fall off this morning through the power of God's word in the name of Jesus. And it says, let there be light, could me, Lord, open my spiritual eyes, open my physical eyes. To the physical uh, blind fellow, it could be, Father, I want to be, I want to see, I want to see. To the spiritually blind, it means, Lord, open my spiritual eyes so that I might begin to see the invisible, so that I might begin to understand when you give me classified information. And God still reveals classified information, and that is one of our rights. That is one of our rights when it comes to, uh, uh, as a child of God. That is our right. Classified information. You don't need to get this information elsewhere. First and foremost, God will give it to you. Even if you are not getting it elsewhere, God has already given it to you. God has already given it to you. Classified information. So when that prophecy is coming, it will not be a confirmation of what God has already told you. So this is our identity. This is our right. 
to get clarity because right now, like I said, the blood of Jesus has opened the very has opened the door for you and I. So, so we don't even need middleman. We don't need intermediary any longer when it comes between us and our Father who art in heaven. Let nobody tell you. Let nobody brainwash you. It's just like I will always say, I am here sitting down right now. I am here right now. I am here. And my son is coming. He's looking for something. He will just pass me that is the mother. Or let me say my husband is here. Sitting down right now as the father. And he's coming, you know. Or maybe he's coming back from school. And they say, oh, you know what? You need to buy this book. He came back from school. He saw the father sitting down here. He will just pass me and the father, for instance. He will go and open the door and begin to ask the neighbor. When he did the room, he entered. He owns the key. He has his own special key. He came back from school. He opened the door. He entered the house. He went. He locked the door by himself again. He went to be knocking at the neighbor's door. Will the neighbor give to him? No. But because he owns the key, he owns the key to his father's house, to his father's door. The moment he opened the door, the next thing was, he, ah, they said I should buy this book tomorrow. They said I should buy this book tomorrow. So that is how we, we are to God. You don't bypass your father. I begin to look for someone else. I want to help you to ask your father, this is what I want. You don't. Because why? It is your right. Like I said, as a child of God, you want to ask God for something. Now you need to ask according to his will. You don't need to go out of his will. God forbid, but it's just that somebody is asking God, oh, Father, kill this person for me. Kill this person for me. And when God, God is not a killer, like we will always say, God is not a killer. And when God will look at the person, you will say, kill, 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 kill. The God will look at the person, and the person's hand is clean. The heart is pure. The what are you, why are you then God will never answer you. Even if you cry from now to next year, God will not answer. Why? Because God knows that the person's hand is clean, and the heart is pure, and the person is innocent. It's innocent. So there are some things we actually ask God that God will never do because he knows. Because like I will always say, before God answers prayer, he searches the heart. So as a people of God, before, <laughs> Mama Pekila, God bless you, Mama. So as a people of God, eh, that is why the Bible says a lot of people, they, they pray and they pray and mix. Praying and mix, they ask and mix. So when I used to talk, when, when I used to talk people, the, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Eh? Even this morning, there was something that even actually happened and I have to call my mama and we dig it deep before she not clarify me, you understand? Now, when we talk about uh, ask and it shall be, uh, and it shall be given. Now, you, you, you should know what you are asking God to do. You should know what you are asking your father to do for you. And like I will always say, if whatever you are asking God align with the purpose of God for your life, and you and you quote the scripture, le katoba shandegerebo si as somebody quote the scripture, tell him this is where you wrote it, as it is written, as it is written. Quote the scripture back to God. Quote the scripture back to your father. Remember, the Bible says the word of God can never fall to, down to the ground. His word can never, never return back to him void. His word can never. So you don't just say, Father, oh, this is Father, oh, Father. Get, remind him. Quote back his words to him. His word is here and amen. The word of God is here and amen. He said, have I said it and I did not do it? Is there anything I have said that I did not do? Let's take a look at Genesis to Revelation. Like I will always say. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no situation that God steps in. He said, come, let's read it together. Thank you, Mama. God bless you. God bless you, Mama. From Genesis, there is no situation, somebody, no matter how long it was, no matter how they tarry, the moment God will step in, da, 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 the, you will just see that the whole thing will turn around. It will turn around. So we don't just ask. When we say ask and it shall be given, always learn to remind God of his word. This is where a lot of people, they get it all wrong. Remind him of those things. Father, you said by your stripes, I am healed. I am healed. I declare and I decree that I am healed. I am healed. So like I said, there are a lot of scriptures, beautiful promises, prophecies, that you just need to remind your father. And before, you, and nothing will stop God, not to, because it is his word. It's as it is, as it is written. Though in my tarry, Sometimes you want to take you through that process, but even as you are going through that process, like I will always say, it, I don't encourage people to just keep quiet. Never. 
It is your right. Ask for it. Go for it. The Bible say, as it shall be given, seek, you will find, knock, the door shall be opened. So no matter how you keep knocking, keep knocking. It's the one that say knock. Keep knocking at the door. And as you keep knocking, keep quoting, like I said, reminding him of those things that he says he will do for you. So there are situations that you don't, no situation said that you need to keep quiet. This is an, another example we get from a blind party, Myers. The people we are saying, shut up your mouth, keep quiet. Ah, the more they say, shut up. He keeps screaming, he keeps shouting. What about Zacchaeus? What about Zacchaeus? Search the scriptures. Know what it is written concerning your situation. Decree and declare it. It shall be established. Oh, woman of Mama, God bless you. The Bible says, decree a thing. Decree it and it shall be established. And when you decree it, you decree it with the word of God. It shall be established. Though it might start you, but it shall be established. It's just the fact. So when I talk about asking, I, 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 I will always say, I'm not saying, don't, don't go and ask God to remove somebody's neck eh, that have not even done anything to you. Even if the person has done something, first of all, pray that the person will have a repentant heart. By the time the person did not change, eh, now the person called no, now, you understand? Not be you can't do the person anything. Now the person, oh, now he can't just do and wait in one do one. Eh? So our own, that is just it. Keep on asking. It will be given to you. Oh, that is my pastor, Mrs. in the house, woman of God. Mama, God bless you. Let's see what Pastor Eziba wrote for us. She said, keep on asking and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking. It, you will find it. Keep on knocking reverently and the door will be opened. Just like the woman. We saw that woman uh, that, that, that went to Jesus. And Jesus said, go, 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 go. You know what? Huh? The, 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 the Gentile woman. He said, the bread is not for dog. For we are the woman agree. And she got what she wanted from Jesus. What about the woman with the issue of blood? The Bible says she pressed. She pressed. Until she pressed. You see, she pressed. She keep pressing, 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 pressing until she touched the M of Jesus' garment. She keep asking, asking. She, for good 12 years. <laughs> for good 12 years, she has been there. But the moment she made up her mind, I said, no, today, today, not today. The Bible says the pool of blood dried up. What about the man that was at the pool of Bethesda for good 38 years? So like I will always say, not that God does not know those things that we want. He knows, but he still says we should ask. So when you want to ask, ask according to his will. Uh -huh. Ask according to his will. And when you ask according to his will, that is according to his word, according to what he has said he will do. God will do what he says he will do, no matter how, how, how long it is. Ask according, amen, mama, keep asking according to his will. Even when you are not seeing those things, keep asking according to his will. Faith, call it forth those things as if they were. You are calling them forth. You bring them forth. You draw them closer. Eh? As if you are already working on them. This is what faith can do. So you just keep asking because he said ask. You just keep asking him, remind him of those beautiful things. So when the, what, what, why you see me sounding like this is this. When the light of God is upon the life of a man or a woman, there are some rights. We own the right. Jesus is the light. And remember the Bible says every good and every perfect gift cometh from God. It comes from God. So me, Rachel Musa, I don't know how to tell people, don't worry, don't, don't worry, be happy. You know what? Just be there. It's the will of God. Even when I know that that situation, ah, uh -uh, I will say cry to God though. Cry to God. Just keep crying. Father, let your will be done in this situation. But this is not, I know. You said the thoughts you have for me is of good and not of evil. <laughs> Woman of God, that's an to God bless you, mama. Ask again. Hey, hey, you see, you see. You see, you, 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 you see scriptures this morning. Mama, ask the queen, God bless you all. Woman of God, God bless every one of you. So, me, I don't, I don't, you know, I always love positive things. That is me. Even when I don't see them coming, I, I, I decree, I keep confessing it. Hey, I keep calling them forth. I don't like, uh, maybe situation, hey, no worry, it is where, hey, it is where, Yes, the, I know. The Bible says, say to the righteous, it shall be well with them. Yes, it did. Jeremiah 29, level, God bless you, mama. It is, say to the righteous, it, it, I know it is well, oh, but thank God, oh, talk to God, oh, don't you quiet. Keep calling on God. Keep calling on God. The Bible says, Father, satisfy us early. Satisfy us early, according to the psalmist. Eh? Satisfy us early. So your own, like I said, he is your father. You talk to him as your friend. Your father, your friend. That is who God is to us. 
So we talk to him as our friend, as our father, as our everything. It now depends on him to say, okay, just like I said, my son will ask me for school fees. I will say, okay, go and sit down. I will pay it tomorrow or I will pay it next tomorrow. I, must, I, might, I might not give it to you, no, 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 no. But I will pay it, I will pay it. That is it. Is your right? <laughs> you are a child of light. So light you are the carrier of the presence of God. Eh? In fact, our own is good, 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 good. Whether when, even when the situation is bad, but we are calling it that it is good. That is it. Even when you know that that situation is bad, you are not seeing the bad of that situation. What you are seeing in that situation is the good that will come out of that situation. So you will not say it is bad. You will say, I know, even though I walk through this situation, even when I, I, I know that this, you, you, you are not seeing the bad of that situation at all. This is how, this is, <laughs> I, I, like I said, let's build up this faith. Come on, somebody, activate your faith, activate it. Even when it is bad, but you are seeing the good that will come out of it. So you will not say it is bad. Proudness of God is your right. It is our right, see, Mama. God bless you. You are seeing the good that is coming out of it. You are not seeing anything that is wrong. You are not seeing it that you are sick. You are not seeing it that you are sick. But all what you are seeing is that I am healed. I am strong. I am healed. I am strong. You are not seeing it in the other way around, but you are seeing the good that will come out of it. Because my Bible says all things work together for our good. Is, that, is it not the scripture? Is that not a prophecy for somebody this morning? My Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. So no matter the situation, no matter how terrible it is, no matter how horrible it is, my Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And because I love God, this situation, I'm not seeing the bad as aspect of it. I am seeing the good that is coming out of you. That is a prophecy. Call the light out of darkness. Oh my God, I am blessed this morning to have all these mothers of faith in the platform. God bless you, Minister Bosse Brown. Thank you, everyone. You listen, like Mama, Mama Eziba just said, call the light out of darkness. Call the light out of darkness. No matter the situation, bring out the light out of that situation. You are not seeing that situation. So that is why we always say, I don't know how to pamper people in, in situations, in problems, in uh, that. No! I will always say, ask, oh, your papa and I talk him. And if you want to ask, look for scripture that, 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 that consign that situation and ask. And ask. So when we want to ask, like I said, as people of God, we know what we are asking. Because the Bible says, whatever we ask according to his will, so that we will not ask amiss. So you that is asking, ask according to his will. Asking according to his will, simply you ask according to the scriptures, what is written in the scriptures. And in no distant time, there will be manifestation of it because the Bible says the word of God can never return back to him void. His word is here and amen. So that is it. God bless you all. My mom is in the house. So to, to, to the blind spiritually means, Lord, open my eyes so that I may begin to see invisible things i may begin to receive classified information the psalmist wrote open down my eyes hey this was psalm 119 verse 18 open down my eyes lord that i may behold wondrous things open my eyes that i will behold wondrous things this did not mean the psalmist was physically blind rather he knew that he could only see the depth of the of the lord's will for his life in the word of god when his spiritual eyes are opened so that is why we must keep praying that God will open our spiritual eyes. We need it very, very like seriously. We need it. Some people may be doing wrong thing without knowing and they will think they are on the right path. Why? Because they are spiritually blind. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the end thereof is what destruction. But remember, the word of the Lord makes you and I to understand that the steps of the righteous man shall be ordered by God. The steps of a righteous man shall be do what? Ordered by God. So if you are a child of light, you are a child of God, he will order your steps. So you will not go to the way of destruction because this one now is God that is leading you. Like I said, even if there is destruction somewhere, before you get there, eh, before you get there, you will jump and pass. Even if you see, you see it, you will jump and pass. Why? Because it is God now that is leading you, that is directing you. He said, wherever the soul of our feet shall tread upon, we will do what we will possess. The arrow that flies by day, by noon, by night, it will not come near us. 
It will not come near us. Why? Because it is God that is leading you. It is when God has done leading you that you will just follow the road. And God forbid, that is a dark way. The, 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 the way that seemeth right unto a man. So we still have a lot of people like that, though, that have not received Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. They might think that they are enjoying, they are enjoying their, their life. They don't know that a man without Christ is living a wasted life. You understand? So this is the way that seemeth right unto a man. They might think that the things that they are doing is right. They are enjoying the world. They, they have everything, like I will always say, they have everything that they've ever needed. And uh, without Christ, the Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away, but only the word of the Lord stand there sure. But you and I, that we are in Christ Jesus, we, it is even our right to enjoy all these things. So we enjoy with Christ. We enjoy with Christ so that we as well, we will reign with Christ. We don't enjoy without Christ in the world. By the time you enjoy without Christ in this world, you will not reign with him because you have already enjoyed everything you want to enjoy. Yeah. But you enjoy with Christ, you will still reign with Christ. That is the will of God for us. So if you are out there this morning and you have not received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, know it that the trumpet can sound at any time, come out of darkness, not to light. And I pray that heaven will rejoice over your soul in Jesus' name. But I thank God for all my mothers that are right here this morning. Life without Christ is full of crises. Hey, mama. Mama, God bless you. A life without Christ is full of crises, full of problems. Full of crises, full of problems. But that does not mean we, the people of God, we will not still go through test time. We will not still go through trial time. But remember, the Bible says, even in the midst of the test, like I said, even in the midst of the trials, you are not even seeing the test. You are not seeing the trial because you know that all things will definitely work perfectly together for your good because you know that you love God. You know your true identity, Christ Jesus, just like Job. Job was not bothered. He was not worried. The wife said, you know what, cause God and die. The friend said, cause God and die. He was not bothered. He was not, he, 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 he was not even worried. Why would I cause God and die? When I know who I am, a man of integrity, I know that this, whatever I'm going through now, is not what I've caused with my ends. He knew. So there are some situations you go through as a child of God, you are not bothered because you have examined yourself and you know that, oh, my hands are clean, my heart is pure. So no matter what I'm seeing now, I will always see the good that will come out of it. Do you know what? I am on a process. I am in the making to my next level. God is refining me. Is processing me. That is what you will be seeing. You will be seeing your next level out of that situation, out of that circumstances. You will not be bothered. You will not, even in the midst of it or the joy of the Lord, will be your what? Your strength. Will be your strength. This is so common among the religious and uh, the difference is we, we know victory is sure. Hey, yeah, Mama have said it. Our victory is sure. He said he has already overcome the world for us. In the world, we will get trials. In the world, we will get problems. We will get tribulation. He said, but be of good share. I have overcome the world. So our victory is sure in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Our victory is sure. Our victory is sure. It, it, it has already been given to you and I on the cross of Calvary. Let's keep walking in the liberty that God has given to us. This is so common among the religious and intellectuals. The case of Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul, the apostles, is a classic example of this. You see, when Saul actually was killing the Christians, he thought that he was doing good anyway. Though if you look at it, 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 in, his, it is, in his very eyes, he was doing the right thing. But in the sight of God, actually, it was not right until he had an encounter with the king of glory until he had an encounter with Jesus. Before he knew it that, oh, all these things I was doing, killing Christians and all, it was wrong. And before you know it, today, he is he, 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 Apostle Paul. We see a lot of people, oh, Apostle Paul is my mentor. Apostle Paul is this. Apostle Paul said, Apostle Paul said, Apostle Paul said. So sometimes in life, it is not uh, your yesterday, like we will always say, does not really matter. Because actually, that is why I say God is not a killer. God wants people to be saved. He wants people to be liberated. And like I will always say, if maybe eventually a lot of people refuse now to accept Jesus as a Lord, a personal Savior, or a, a lot of people refuse to change. So our God is not a killer. He's not a killer. If he's a killer, you and I, I don't know where we would have been. Eh? I don't know where we would have been. I don't know. So the will of God for us is to see that men and women, they are saved. And that is why we need to keep praying for them. But as many of them that now have a reprobate mind, you understand? It's not God that is killing anybody. That is one thing I've come to realize. 
It's not God. It is their own wickedness now. It is their wickedness that is destroying them, not God. You understand? Because God is not a killer. He said, my will is to see that all men do what come to repentance. My will is to see that all men are saved. Then why did he not say, you and I should go and preach to as many that are still in darkness? So it is the wickedness of men that is destroying them. Our own, like I always say, is to pray. That is why the Bible says, he that did get a pitch are falling daring. It's just like you, you dig a pit for your neighbor that have done you nothing. And if you fall into that pit, it's not your neighbor that put you into that pit. It is you that put yourself inside that pit. Because it must be what? Back to sender. Because that person is innocent. So God is not a killer. He's a deliverer. <laughs> He's a deliverer. He, 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 he saves. God. So any man or any woman... There may be God for big bad thing. Like I said, the, remember the Bible says the wickedness of the wicked must come to an end. God bless you, mama. The wickedness of the wicked must come to an end. So anybody that not see whatever they see, it is their wickedness. It is not you. It is not I. We are not murderers. As a child of God, we are not murderers. We know the key. Our own is to save. Our own is to see that people come to repentance. Our own is to see that lives have been transformed. Our own is to see that lives have been saved. But as many of them, like I said, they now have a heart of stone that refuse to repent. Just as the word of God is coming, the word of God is everywhere. Then it's not them. Or as, as many of them that they refuse to leave their uh, a sinful heart, their evil that they are doing. So by the time you, maybe you as a child of God, you pray, Oh, Abba Father, every, every, every arrow, go back to sender. The Bible says they, they, they will come in one way and flew away what, in several ways. The Bible says when the enemy shall uh, uh, come to us as a flood, when the enemy shall raise up a flood against, uh, when the enemy shall arise, Eh? Like what? Like a flood. The Bible says the Spirit of God will do what? Lift up now a standard against them. Remember, they were the one that arise first. You were just on your own as a child of God. No weapon from affection against us shall prosper. He that rolleth a stone, the stone will go back. These are scriptures. So it is not God. It is the people by themselves that is doing all these wicked things. So whatever they now see is an act of their wickedness. Because the Bible says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sow, he will reap. He will reap. So the will of God for us, that is why God wants our eyes to be open, to begin to see the invisible. <laughs> Woman of God, God bless you, Minister Amen. Grace, God bless you, Mama. To begin to see the invisible. So in any area we are blind, I pray that the light of God that we have seen, we have shined every darkness out of our eyes in the name of Jesus, somebody. In the name of Jesus. The Spirit, yes, the Spirit of God will now lift up a standard against them. He will lift up a standard against them. So we saw that was exactly what happened to Apostle Paul. But when he was saw, we saw what he was doing. What he was doing. The story in our memory verse today points to the darkness of the physical blindness. That was the story of blind uh, Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. People shouted, Bartimaeus, sit down there. Bartimaeus, keep quiet. <laughs> they tried to shut up his mouth. The more they try to close his mouth, the more he, he opened the mouth. Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. And he had an encounter with Jesus. Don't allow situations of life to shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. Don't allow troubles of life to shut your mouth. Call on Jesus and he will hear you. He will hear you. Keep calling on him, somebody. Just keep calling on him. A blind man might be subjected to unwarranted harassment, even from those very close to him, probably because they feel it's a burden to them. Like I said, when we are, God for me, but for instance, I am working with a blind man now. It might slow down my speed because you are not really seeing what I'm seeing. Come on. You are not really seeing what I'm seeing. I am seeing greatness. I am seeing promotion. I am seeing a new level. Eh? I am seeing men and women coming out of darkness. I am seeing, I am, I am depopulating the kingdom of darkness and bringing men and women to light. But maybe because you are not seeing, you say, what is this woman doing? What is she saying? What is she doing? But I am seeing that the kingdom of darkness, eh? I will depopulate the kingdom of darkness and make sure I'm able to bring as many to light. This is what I am saying. But you will say, what is wrong with you? Every morning you will just come here, begin to shout and just begin to talk. Hey, somebody, the Bible says, God uses the foolish things of the wise to confirm what the word. He uses the foolish things of the world to confirm the wise. What I am saying, devil, you are not going to, you, this soul, this soul that is in Afghanistan, 
This so that is in India. This so that is in US. You are not the owner. Jesus is the owner. This is what I am seeing. And that is why you see I come here every morning. I begin to scry. I begin to shout like blind Bartimaeus. I begin to scream like blind Bartimaeus. <laughs> why? Because he said, go, I will be with you. Even unto the end of the world. The Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those that preaches the gospel. So what are we not saying? So this is what I am seeing. I am seeing revival. I am seeing men and women coming out from darkness to light. This is what I am seeing. This is what I am seeing, somebody. I am seeing lives being changed. I am seeing lives being transformed. I am seeing situations, troubling, stories turning to glory. This is what I am seeing. This is what I am seeing. So that is why the, 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 the word of God is telling us this morning, sometimes when you move with blind people, you will slow down. You, you will not be able to accomplish the purpose, your, your divine mandate for God. Why? Because they might not be seeing what you are seeing. And I pray that this 2022, may God give us the, the grace to move with people, like I said, that have the insight about the word of God. The deep, deeper revelation about what God can do, that God can do and undo. Eagles cannot be seen among chickens. Hey! <coughs> Minister Megresu, God bless you, Mama. Like she said, so this is what we are seeing. This is the picture we are seeing. Like she said, eagles cannot be seen among chickens. No wonder the Bible says a blind man cannot lead a blind man. But so the two of them will go and fall inside pits. So one must, one eyes must be opened. One eyes must be opened in order to be able to open the eyes of the other. So I want us to begin to see positive things. Even in the midst of negativity, see positive. That is what we are going to. Even in the midst of negativity, see the positive thing. See what is coming out of this that situation that it is positive. It is positive. May God help us. May God just help us in this end time. May God help us. So we don't need, I, I don't want you to walk slow this year. It's not the will of God. The sage is broken. I don't want you to walk slow. And that is why you must move with people that have insight. Insight. Insight about the word of God. About what God is capable of doing this year 2022 and say no enough is enough i must arrive i must deliver i must give birth to my baby i must push it out i must deliver what god wants me to deliver because why i know that i am a voice in this world nothing will silence it no needle will silence it no needle to sow the mat even if they <laughs> no needle to sow the mat can sow it is it possible is it possible? Hmm. Is it possible, somebody? <laughs> Is it possible? No needle can sew the mouth. Huh? We are the we are the keep the needle. No needle. Is it possible? They will only try, but they will not succeed. They will not succeed. Arise. Hey, woman of God. God bless you, Mama. Mama said, Arise, shine, for the glory of God is upon you today and always. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. God is it. Arise, shine. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Ah, ah. I believe Pastor Mrs. Ezeba will know where I'm going to. When I say no needle, we saw this mat. We are the first the needle. That needle, I will return it back to begin to close, to begin to sew their own mat. Pastor Ezeba might understand. There was a meeting I was yesterday, and I, uh, and I got, uh, in fact, God revealed to redeem, though. When I got that, uh, th that prophecy, I say, ah, huh? which mat? This mat? <laughs> Who is it that said that it come to pass? When the Lord God of us have not spoken. Who? Who is it that said? <laughs> Mama, you did laugh. Should we understand? My pastor is even in the house. You understand what I'm trying to say? Who is it that said when God have not spoken? Go carry needle. Say one so my mat. As they carry the needle, the needle go. They so so your mat. They go. Pa, 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 pa. Ah, God revealed to redeem. And that is why I said, if you walk in the in, in if you walk with God, God will always direct you. At that meeting, when I entered that meeting yesterday night, I was not prepared. Need to catch fire. Hey, mama. <laughs> Need, I was not prepared to enter that meeting. I don't know what just say. Enter. Just enter this meeting. And when I entered the meeting, eh, I just the, 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 the woman of God just knock me. That prophecy. I say, ah, huh? hey, you see, God revealed to redeem. God have exposed their bomb boy again. Which needle? That need the go so all of their mats if they if they refuse to repent this year. But I pray they will come to repentance. Do you know why? 
Do you know why I say I pray they should come to repentance? Because God does not want any soul to perish. Somebody, whatever it will take you this year to build a personal relationship with God, sacrifice it. We have suffered a lot. Somebody, whatever it will take you this year, eh, to let it look as far, see, see me, God, see me, see you. Whatever it will take you this year, eh, for you to have that intimacy with God, because we have suffered a lot. Hey, ya taya gabosha. We even, even when Jesus has set a whole lot of us free, we are still suffering. We are still suffering because I must tell you it's because we have not come close to this God. If you come close to God, you will see a lot of benefits that you as a child of God, you need to have. Whatever it will take you to owe this God this year, only him tight and say, Father, if it's not you, it is not you. If not be you, it not go be you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Whatever it will take you so that you we will not become a prey in the ends of the powers of people, people, those of them that are manipulating people, stars, glory, holding their remote control, dragging people back, front, back, front, back. A lot of Christians are going through all these things I am measuring. I was so blessed yesterday in that meeting. And may God continue to empower uh, uh, that reverend. I was so blessed. I was not prepared to enter, but I just said, let me enter. You understand? When you enter some kind of meeting, you will hear some kind of things and you say, hey, this word there, eh? you will know as a child of God, you need to stand out to the word of God and say, Father, enough is enough. If it not be you, it not go be you. Hey? You will know. So whatever it will take you to embrace Jesus this year, whatever it will take you to embrace the, the, the scriptures, whatever it will take you to build that intimacy with God, somebody do it too. If you do it, it's for your own good. It's not for Sister Rachel. It's for your own good. Because like I said, enough is enough. A lot of us, we have suffered a lot. Enough is enough. Like my mama said, woman of God said, he said, arise and shine. That is the will of God for you. Life is spiritual. Hold fast to Jesus. Whatever it will take you to hold fast. Father, if it's not you, it's not you. This year, ah, if not be you, not go be you. Do it. And you will, you will enjoy it for yourself and your family. You will enjoy it because, like I said, enough is enough. A lot of us, we have suffered a lot. Our suffering is over. The siege is over. Our suffering is over. Only if you yourself embrace Jesus. And the only way you can embrace him is the scripture. It's a scripture. <laughs> it's a scripture. So we don't need a slow speed. That is why you must walk, like I said, let your eyes be opened. Walk with positive-minded people, like I will always say. <coughs> they always see the good out of every situation. By so doing, you will be encouraged. It's just like I'm going through a situation now. God forbid. Maybe I'm passing through some kind of test at time. And the, 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 maybe the next person to me, you will always come and be using me as a pity party. I don't need people that will use me as a pity party this year. Encourage me and let me know that. You, you know what? Come on, get up. Bath. Rub pancake. Make up. Get up from here. This place does not belong to you. Don't be encouraging me. You will not be doing me as a pity party. And eh, don't worry. It's a, it's, maybe it's just the alcohol want it. And eh, don't worry. You know the situation of Job. And eh, you know the situation of this. You know the situation of that. Yes, I know. But tell me, don't worry. I am. Get up. This place does not belong to me. It's not my place. This is not where I want to be. Even if, maybe for instance, yes, we, like I said earlier on, you might be going through that time God wants to prepare you to your next level. But my own is a father, satisfy me early. Satisfy me early. I don't want to stay too long on it. Satisfy me early. That is just it. Then it now depends on God. But you, first of all, like I will always say, so that is why you must move with people that encourage, that, that tells you, don't worry. Everything will be all right. Don't worry. You are coming out of it. You are coming out of it. God did not create us to be in one captivity or one bondage. Never, 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 never. Even if God is 
taking us through trials. It will not just put us in one captivity and one bondage as if uh, this. Yes, the children of Israel, they spent the oh, how many years? But thank God for Jesus that has come to give us grace. So thank God for Jesus. So I pray. This is how me, I see my, my, my own. So we have a whole lot of benefits. Even when we are seeing the, some kind of disadvantage, but the benefit covers the advantage, covers the disadvantage. So shall it be for us all this year. I pray that God will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Uh, it was those people who were scrabbling to catch a glimpse of the miracle worker, Jesus Christ, that we are arousing in. However, the man refused to be intimidated. Let no situation intimidate you this year. The man refused to be intimidated. Why? The Bible says that the more they shut him down, the louder he shouted back, eventually drawing the attention of Jesus to himself. Shut back to the devil. Shut back to the devil today and call on the light to shine upon you in order to receive your sight, whether physically or spiritually. His grace is sufficient for us. God bless you, mama. Shut back to the devil, somebody. Shut back to the devil. Shut it back to him. The devil, you cannot keep me in this place any longer. I don't belong here. I'm not a prey. I don't belong here. I am not a prey. He says, shout back to the devil today. I call on the light to shine upon you in order to receive your sight, whether physical or spiritual. Another lesson from this story is the fact that Jesus asked the blind beggar what he actually wanted. The Lord needed to hear him open his mouth to seek his help. God wants to hear him. Jesus wants to hear him. Even the man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, he, he, he also asked the man a question. He asked him a question. Do you want to be made oh? So God is, like I will always say, God is always want us to first of all take the, 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 the move. You need to move. You need to move. Don't remain there. Don't let any situation intimidate you. The Lord needs to hear him open his mouth to seek his help. Go ahead. Open your mouth and pray about any problem you have today. The Father of light will beam his light upon the situation in Jesus' name. You will be victorious. Pastor Mrs. Ezebar already said it. We will be, we are already victorious and we are conquerors in the name of Jesus. Spiritual blindness is a terrible form of darkness. In our Bible reading today, two of the disciples were so spiritually blind that they did not recognize that their Lord, they did not recognize their Lord until the light shone on them. When the light of God shines on you, this power will disappear. Strength is regained and joy unspeakable would become your portion. So this brings us to the conclusion of today's Open Heaven. And like I said, the series of Let There Be Light. Today is the part 10. And uh, we've come to the conclusion of Let There Be Light, part 10. Tomorrow we are going to be seeing another different topic entirely. But I'm so blessed because I know the light of God is already shining. So you, like I will always say, let nothing dim your light. He said we are light. We are light. And even if you put a light under a bush here, you understand? It must, it, you must see the light. A city that is set on an E can never be hidden. Never, never. Let your light so shine that they will see your good works and glorify God which is in heaven. We are the salt of the earth. No more chains holding us. No more bound. No more chains. We are no longer bound. Praise the Lord. Oh yes, chains are falling. Chains are falling. We are no longer slaves to fear. Our soul has escaped like a bird. Our soul has escaped like a bird, somebody. We are no longer slaves to fear. Amen, mama. No more chains holding us. We, we are no longer bound. And actually, mama, you are in spirit, oh, eh? Woman of God, you are always in spirit. And let me read the conclusion. Like she said, praise the Lord. And that the conclusion of today, heaven says, when light shines on you, these things disappear. Strength is regained. And joy unspeakable will become your portion. Praise the Lord. Is, not, is, is this not a confirmation that the Spirit of God is in this platform this morning? Eh? Is this not a confirmation? Like Mama said, no more chains holding us. We are no longer bad. Praise the Lord. And the conclusive part of the open devil also said, when light shines, darkness disappears. A strength is regained and joy unspeakable. We continue to be our portion. Praise the Lord. Because why? We are no longer slaves to fear. Praise the Lord. So this is this shows it that, like I said, when anointing, jam anointing, even the kingdom of darkness, they will tremble. This is what is always happening here. When fire join fire, you will see the fire everywhere. You will see the fire everywhere. Eh? You will see it, at least the, 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 the mothers I have in this platform this morning, like I will always say, I don't take this for granted. I honor God in your life. Pastor Eziba, I honor God in your life. Mama, God bless you. Mama, uh, uh, woman of God, Asana too, I honor God in your life. 
Every one of you that is watching, Mama Miriam, Mama Susanna, everyone that wrote, Mama Peculiar, I honor God in your life. And I celebrate the grace of God upon each and every one of your life in the name of Jesus. More grace and strength. Amen to every one of us. May God continue to strengthen us all in the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord will still continue to be our strength. Let's just embrace God. Like I said, whatever it will take you to say, God, if not you this year, it is not you. Embrace Him. You, you, along the line, you might lose a lot of things that you think that they are flashing before, but don't worry. Seek it first the kingdom of God. All these things, they will come back. They will come back in their own due time. They will come back because there is nothing like God begin. There is nothing like God by himself ordering your step. I am telling you, there is nothing like God by himself or sharing your step or dream your step. And by the time God take the lead and you follow, you can never fall as a prey. In the ends of the kingdom of darkness. I am telling you. You can never, never fall as a prey into danger. You're not going to fall like that. Even when it comes once in a while. The Bible tells you that you will not remain there. God will lift you up. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming around. That is just the conclusion of today's open heaven. And uh, our actual point, our prayer point today say, Pray like the blind Bartimaeus. Ask God what, uh, ask God to send light upon you for new insight. We need new insight every day. Just ask God to shine his light upon you and give you new insight into his will now for your life. Just tell God to give you new insight. New insight concerning the purpose. The purpose, his purpose for your life. New insight, his will for your life. Just ask God that your eyes will begin to see all those things that has been hidden. He said the hidden, the, the, the hidden treasures of, um, the hidden uh, uh, riches, the hidden treasures. He said, it will reveal to us all. And I pray that God will continue to reveal to you and I in Jesus' name. Today, Bible in one year, Exodus 28, 29. Bible in one year, Exodus 28, 29. So wherever you are, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord, a personal Savior, kindly please do. Because Jesus loves you. Like I said, he does not want any soul to perish. And I pray that everyone will rejoice over your soul. I just want you, even everyone, please, I need this grace. Even with myself, I need the grace of God. Like Mama said, the grace of God is sufficient for us. Always remember me in your prayers as well. Kindly please, because this journey, I know that God is taking me somewhere. Somewhere. And I know by the special grace of God, I know I will get to that place God wants me to go for him. I am no, I know that I am not alone. But like I will always say, the Bible says, uh, a man that taken that his stand, he should watch it least you will fall. So that is why we keep praying and say, Father, help us. We don't preach to others and we forget about ourselves. We we'll keep saying, oh, Father, help us to see that we will fight this good fight of faith to the end. That at the end of it, all, we will not preach to people and we will not become what? A castaway. And I pray that God will help each and every one of us to make it at the sound of the rapture in the name of Jesus. None of us shall be found missing. We will not die. We will fulfill the work of God. We will fulfill. We will complete that work that God has commissioned into our hands. He said, we will not die, but live to declare the word of the Lord in this land of the living, in the name of Jesus. Mama Susanna, God bless every one of you. Thank you for coming this morning. Abba Father, I just want to say thank you for how far you have brought us this morning. Oh, Jesus, we just want to say we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you for how far you have brought us to us. Thank you for your grace, your strength that is sufficient for us. We just want to say thank you. Even as we are living and we are not living your presence may this day work in our favor may the sun that may the arrow that went uh, whatever that has been uh, orchestrated for this day it will not come near our dwelling in the name of jesus may today favor us oh god our food is blessed our water is blessed we ask oh god that our going at our coming is blessed only good news is permitted to come to us in today in the name of jesus have your way oh lord even as we come back tomorrow morning jesus if you tarry preserve us and keep watch over us because you never sleep no number may your light continue to shine upon our life Father, may your light expose every darkness in our life. May your light expose every darkness in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, give us the grace to be able to stand out, that we will be able to do exploit for you this year in Jesus' name. Thank you, glorious God, for in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Once again, a very big thank you to you all. Mama, you are still there. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If Jesus is tiring, we'll see you tomorrow. Like I said, let there be light. Let, let there be light finally has come to an end but that is not the end because this is the beginning the light has started shining and it will shine so tomorrow is no longer let there be light you are going to be seeing other topics from now but better is the end of a thing than the beginning and i so much appreciate god for all the grace all the grace that is brought to this platform this morning i'm humbled i'm humbled i'm humbled god bless you all thank you thank you stay blessed if jesus sorry we'll see you tomorrow morning again by god's grace
All right, everyone. Do have a blissful day. Mama, God bless you. You go and rest now after work. Mama Susie, Mama Mary, God bless you. I don't feel like going, but let me go. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. I love you with the love of Christ. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. The light is shining bright already. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. Stay blessed. Shalom. <laughs>